Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today we celebrate the feast day of these holy innocents. These are the children who were murdered by King Herod at the time of our Lord's birth. So at this time, there were definitely messianic expectations. We had the fulfillment of certain prophecies which were pointing to the time of the Messiah. There was the prophecy of Jacob from Genesis chapter 49, verse 10, that said the scepter would not pass from the tribe of Judah until the expectation of the nations comes. And so when Herod was appointed as king of Judea by the Romans, not by the Jews themselves, uh, that marked the time when the scepter had passed from Judah. Then we also had the prophecy of Daniel, the 70 weeks of years, which were also coming to a conclusion, having started at the time of Zerubbabel and the building of the second temple. So there were definitely uh, messianic expectations. In fact, there were false messiahs who were coming around too. And uh, Herod himself begins to become afraid when these wise men arrive from the east and they're looking for the newborn king. Okay, that's the type of language that was causing Herod to fear. Why? Because he was so attached to his power. You see that? He was attached to his power and he himself, you know, from there was something I read, maybe it was Josephus or something like that, that Herod himself wanted to be this Messiah, this expected Messiah. And so he has murderous thoughts to resolve the problem. Now, there's a wonderful meditation from today's Office of Readings uh, from St. Quodvul Deus, where he says, To save his kingdom, Herod resolves to kill Christ. Though if he would have faith in the child, he himself would reign in peace in this life and forever in the life to come. Right? See, that peace and the kingdom uh, that Herod desired could have been gained had he placed his faith in Christ and his obedience and allegiance to this newborn king. You see, if we know our place in this world and we acknowledge God's place, then things work out for the best, right? All things work for the good for those who love God. But instead, Herod uh, does murderous things and lives a life of turmoil, a disturbed life, and finishes badly. Herod, are you not, Herod, um, are you not restrained by the love of weeping mothers or fathers mourning the deaths of their sons? Right? Those parents in Bethlehem who had their ch children killed, did he, was he so cold-hearted that not even that would budge him? Herod, you destroy those who are tiny in body because fear is destroying your heart. Right? The, the malice involved in that. You imagine that if you accomplish your desire, you can prolong your own life, your own life as king. And so all of this is a massive deception, okay? And we can say that certainly evil spirits were at work in all of this. Right? The devil is a liar and the father of lies and a murderer from the beginning. Now, it's amazing how this meditation of St. Quodvul Deus can be applied to our own times when we have our own modern-day slaughter of the innocents taking place throughout the world and in our own country by means of abortion, right? What is taking place? There is a massive massacre going on right under our very eyes and one that is actually much worse than the one that took place in Bethlehem. I remember reading some time ago that based on the number of 
inhabitants of the village of Bethlehem at the time. There were probably somewhere from 20 to 30 um, boys of two years and under in Bethlehem in the vicinity. Okay, that's the number of abortions that take place every Thursday in downtown Bloomington. Okay, that's what we have going on here. And we have our modern-day Herods, right? Those who have political power and misuse it to establish this most unjust law of legalized abortion, right? This is an unjust law, which in fact is no law at all. We have the gravest injustice taking place of denying the right to life of these unborn children. So Herod, to save his kingdom, he resolves to kill, though if he would have faith in the child, he himself would reign in peace in this life and forever in the life to come. Okay, that's the same thing for the modern-day Herods today. If they would place their faith in Christ and put their faith into practice, in fact, that's what we pray for at the beginning of today's Mass. We say that the faith in you which we confess with our lips may also speak through our manner of life. So if you are a Christian politician out there, your manner of life, the way you vote, the laws you establish, they have to correspond with the faith that you profess, not diversely. And the same for all Christians, the way you vote needs to be pro-life. But our Lord said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? What does St. John say in today's first reading? He says, if we say we have fellowship with him, that is with Christ, while we continue to walk in darkness, we lie and do not act in truth. So we cannot have fellowship with Christ if we embrace the lie um, that there is some legal uh, right to abortion, okay? That is completely false. And against not only faith, but against the natural law, right? Right reason with regard to um, morality. No faith is required to know that the direct killing of innocent people is gravely immoral, immoral always and everywhere. And so, Herod orders the massacre, and uh, you are not restrained by the love of weeping mothers or fathers mourning the deaths of their sons. How many broken hearts, how many broken lives over the deaths of these unborn children, which does not uh, seem to move the hearts of our lawmakers. You destroy those tiny in body because fear is destroying your heart. Right? How many are moved by fear uh, to make that choice against life? You imagine that if you accomplish your desire, you can prolong your life. Right? That will somehow obtain the life that we desire to go forward with studies and the work that we want and all of the conveniences that we have uh, here and now at the moment, that this child is going to disrupt and ruin all of that. Okay? Another lie. Okay? It be, brings with it sadness and brokenness in the wake of these decisions against life. And so today, we want to invoke the intercession of these holy innocents to restore a culture of life here in America and throughout the world and holy innocence, holy purity uh, in our country and among the youth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.